Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. If indeed you have the breath of life in you, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. I do not think I'm a shy person. But sometimes I'm overwhelmed. And you will find out as we proceed this morning the reason for my being overwhelmed. So let me start like a slow coach. And somewhere along the line, I will gain strength to push. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. Please say to your neighbor, peace to you. Please to your house. Peace to all that you have. And peace on earth to all men of goodwill. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It gives my wife and I such a profound joy to welcome you to the very first CGCC Diaspora Family Convergence in Atlanta, Georgia. History is being made today, Friday, August the 19th, 2022. For those of you in the diaspora, especially those of you who were with us at the beginning of our ministry, we had the opportunity of becoming a denominational church like others. And to that end, we planted churches in Ikoyi, in Okearo. The Okearo pastor is also here. He, he flew in all the way from South Africa. He in satellite town, pastored by Dayo Adeumi. Excellence Parish, jointly pastored by my late friend, Dr. Debajo, then Dr. Fayoye in South Africa. And that was where I first set, or second time I set my eyes on Pastor Biola, I only heard a voice while she was making an announcement. And I asked Pastor Remy, who is that? I said, oh, one of the three pastors here. I said, that sounds like a voice that I know. This is one of mine. Your voice is your signature in the spirit. And that's why David said, my voice, oh Lord, you will hear in the morning. I was recalling that on our 50th birthday recently with Pastor Adesoye sitting down there. The first time I saw Pastor Adeboye, in my, ah, sorry, Adesoye, Shola Adesoye, my life was in Port Harcourt. He was to take an offering and he opened the Bible. He said, let's open our Bibles. And I asked Christy Baturi, who is that? He said, my pastor in the north. I said, that's one of mine. I can recognize his voice. May God recognize your voice. May your voice be heard. May you never be muted. Because our God is immutable. No one can mute God. No one will be able to mute you. And that's why strategically, before Jesus spoke about the harvest, when he said the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few, the last miracle he performed before he said that was to open a man who was mute so that he could speak. May God restore your voice. Amen. May nothing take away your voice in the name of Jesus. And so we planted the excellent parish in Ogba. All these were in Lagos State. And then Pastor Abuola headed for Belkuta to pioneer the 
uh, church in Abelkuta. And eventually, Pastor, I think Inca and Liri headed for Jones in Plateau State, and Shego Yedele replaced um, Pastor Liri when he stepped out to plant his own church. Now, please note that I'm not suggesting this morning that planting churches is evil. No, not at all. The purpose and the methodologies of planting such churches may be contrary to God's plan if the aim is to create a personal empire. But I see no wrong in planting churches if the aim is to extend the frontiers of God's kingdom. And especially if such churches planted are self-governing self-propagating, self-financing, with no controlling and stifling robes that tie them to the so-called headquarter church. We also planted churches back then, and by God's grace, we are still planting churches through our sons and our daughters in ministry. It's just like you birth and raise your children, and when they grow, they go. They mature, they marry, and build their own homes and families ad infinitum. But we had to change a strategy about church planting when my wife and I were guest speakers at the Living Water Missions in Broken Harrow, Oklahoma. I remember like yesterday. My session was to be mid-morning they were to start like 9 o'clock, the way we had started here that day. And I sense in my spirit as you pray. So we told Ross Tetro of blessed memory and his darling wife. It's been 16 years ago now that Ross Tetro passed into heaven. Uh, I spoke, I exchanged pleasantries with his wives some weeks back. Uh, I said to them, please go and leave me behind. I sense in my spirit as you pray. And they said, okay. When they left a number for us, that when you're ready to come, call this number. Inadvertently, while he was leaving the number, instead of two before one, he placed one before two. They were in a hurry. When it was time for us to, call, to go, we called and called. We couldn't make any connection. I said, well, let's just rest. In the process of resting, I saw a phenomenal vision that I'd only seen twice in my life. That day, I saw what you call bullet train, train, the type that the Japanese people have. Now you find them in China. Beautiful. I was going at a terrific top speed. I thought it could crash at any time because of the speed. And suddenly, it slowed down like it was about to be derailed. I kept on looking. This so beautiful train about to be derailed. And I saw it was a heavy load was carrying at the tail end of the train. You remember I shared this with you, those of you in the branches then? And it was going like this. And I saw the names of the local churches we are planted tied to this train about to be derailed. On the train itself was written in bold letters, the Lateran Assembly. Now, if you are in that vision, you, 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 you will sweat because this is your labor of life and everything that you have poured into a ministry about to be derailed. Oh, my friend is here. I'm just seeing him, Pastor Bank Akimola. And Pastor Nee Tete. All the way from Ghana and Atlanta, I don't know. Thank you so much, Pastor Bank. If I knew you were sitting down there, you should be the one speaking this morning. Okay, if you, let's welcome Pastor Bank. Okay. Come over. Please come. Okay, all right. Bless you. 
When I saw the vision of that train about to be derailed, I prayed. Rostetra and his wife joined us later. They came home and they were wondering why we couldn't call them because my session had passed. Now we're preaching the evening of that day. And I told them, look at the number you left us. Ross turned to his wife and said, why did you give them a wrong number? He said, I didn't realize that I wrote two before one instead of one before two, something like that. And we laughed. I said, no, God did not allow me to come because of the vision he showed me. And I relayed the vision. And we all prayed. I returned home. And I called the pastors. God bless you. Days may be given to others to do. This is not part of our ministry. The churches are hereby released to you. Call them whatever name you like. They are yours. Uh, I remember they were reluctant. Now, we were not getting their money at the headquarters. Each one had his account, you remember? And we released their phones to them. Goodbye. Equipment, goodbye. Goodbye. I remember when Pastor Shegun Yedele was to relocate to South Africa because part of the church, the church building was on his land. He was to sell his land. Then he sold the land, and he brought the money back to me. He said, well, we have sold the land. You know, you also invested. This is the money. I said, Pastor Shegun, I told the whole world these things were released to you, and you want me to take it from behind the scene. It's all yours. You remember that? Praise God. From that moment, God began to give us a different strategy. We became a one parish church, and we say, our parish is the entire planet. And one of the strategies he gave to us is what we call intelligent strategic scattering. That if the church in Jerusalem will wait to be scattered, as a result of persecution, we will quickly respond to God by raising sons and daughters and releasing them. And I began to say, we have been here for five years and you have not done anything with your life. Go look for what to do because I'm releasing you to go. I remember a particular day that four pastors left us in one week. We never cursed anyone. We blessed them, prayed for them, sent them forth and allowed people to go with them. And then the major strategic scattering started when all of you now began to japa <laughs> <laughs> to the nations of the earth. Uh, one of those to japa locally was a medical missionary, <laughs> Dr. Fadei, to someone Fadei, first relocated to Oshun State, planted a church. Before we could say Jack Robinson, he was in Ireland. Before you could say what were you doing in Ireland, he had gone to New Zealand. Before we could say New Zealand, he had relocated to Canada. Uh, one of the blessings I'd received from obeying God is that it has produced tremendous increase that I cannot begin to tell you about. Thereafter, we began to send missionaries from the Lateran Assembly into North Africa, into Cairo, into Sudan, into Morocco, into where again? Into Tunisia. Mrs. B and I went to Tunisia. We went to Cairo to strengthen their work there. We also went to, we didn't go to Sudan. There was war in Sudan. We went to Cairo, Tunisia and to Morocco. Our pastor in Morocco will be part of this meeting. Uh, about two weeks or a month ago, he started calling me, sir, we needed to bless you. I said, look, send an account. I said, I don't have an account. Eventually, I forwarded the account of Citadel Global Community Center in Georgia, and from him alone came $70,000. Uh, do you understand me? Uh, those who were sent abroad began to prosper. And God began to extend 
their frontiers or the frontiers of his kingdom through them. I'm not saying this to uh, make you feel this is about money. I'm only telling you when you obey God, you get results. We are going to look at some fundamental things today because many of you came because you wanted to further your education. That was what you thought. Many of you came because you wanted better opportunities. There are those who are leaving good jobs in Nigeria today to relocate here because they're concerned about security. Something will relocate you. Can I just share freely? Yes, sir. I prepared heavy, shed heavy duty message for you and in fullness of time, you get it fully loaded. But let me just share with you. Would you consider Lot a good person? Would you? In the way he lifted up his eyes, in the way he encouraged more or less, or he allowed or permitted the strife between his uh, herdsmen and Abraham's herdsmen, and Abraham said, and look, we are brethren. Let's not, let there be no strife at all. Okay? No, I brought you up. But you take where you want to go first. And he saw the well, you know, watered garden like the garden. Would you consider that a mature believer or a carnal believer? You can say what you like about him. But I come from a different angle and say to you, even his imperfections and his mistakes were woven by God into his eternal purpose. Because God needed witnesses in Sodom. And if you read his account in the New Testament, he said that righteous man's soul was vexed daily as he saw the conversation of the wicked. Now God will not destroy without having witnesses to tell people about him. So you might have a different, oh, Lot is this, Lot is that. For the sake of Lot, angels were despised to make sure he escaped disaster. And then he had, by incestual way, uh, two sons, Ammon and Moab. Moab. Would you consider those ones as part of God's plan? But is Ruth not part of the lineage of Jesus? Did not God bring her in in the 10th generation as he promised? Don't write any nation off. And don't write anyone off. And just in case you say, okay, Lord is extreme. How about Naomi and Elimelech? They were resourceful people. They just relocated because of famine. And then when they go to the land of Moab, boom, husband died. Bum. Marlon and Chilion died. Bum. It was only Naomi that was left. And it was time to return to Bethlehem. After 10 years, he heard that there was no bread in Bethlehem. He left because there was no bread there. And when he returned, the whole city turned up. Is this not Naomi? He said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. But God had a plan. He had said in the 10th generation, the Moabites will be brought back into the family, and he needed root. Prepared root for a man whose mother was a harlot, Rahab. Rahab was the mother of Boaz. And before you know it, Boaz eventually married Ruth. They produced Obed. Obed produced Jesse. Jesse produced David. And if you look at the genealogy of Jesus, he was called first the son of David before he was called the son of Abraham. Yeah. Known unto God are his works from all eternity. He had a purpose for relocating you here. Yeah. My assignment for these few days with you is that now that you are relocated, you must not suffocate. Yeah. I want to thank God for you for such a blessing. Uh, Pastor Neil remembered this very well. I'd never been inside Jared before. You were the one taking me about that day. And I said, I'd never entered this Jared building before. And they call it Galleria. Let me go and see inside because Fisayo might end up having 
a gallery. I didn't know what God had in store that day. We just stepped into the place. And we saw it was jewelry. I said, jewelry, what has this got to do with art? When I saw gallery, I thought it was art gallery. I was looking at the chain I didn't buy. Then walked in uh, Brother Paul Simon. I'd not seen him for years. Was married to my daughter. They first went to Germany. From Germany, they came to America. And we have not seen for some 20 years then. And then I stood there, and he was coming in with their little children who are now graduates of working, and one is doing masters. Little children like this. And I looked at him, I said, this is one of mine. I could, wow, what a pair of shoes. He didn't look at the face. <laughs> so I told Pastor Nee, I said, Pastor Nee, stop that man. And he turned back and said, yes, you know, Americans and once they've been here for a while, it's like, what trouble do you, yes? And he said, the man over there, he said, ah! <laughs> and he grabbed me. What a blessing they have been to me just for that casual contact. God has a thousand and one ways of raising destiny helpers for you. If you, you be responsive to him and let him direct you. This morning, I didn't think about breakfast. My daughter brought stew from home. The husband got bread with, uh, what do you call it? Uh -huh. Goat meat and oxtail. Uh -huh. uh, the husband, there was no coffee. The husband went to look for coffee. And then he said, your clothes for this morning. These are big people. But look at me. And then I'm looking at your faces from everywhere. I know what price names paid to be here. I know. That's why I'm sitting at the tailor because he had busy, 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 busy. He had things he was doing in England at the names. Only your father can rearrange your schedule. <laughs> Dr. Somra did that to me. Pastor Olus, if he's online, will be listening. We were living in Arch End. I told them, please prepare a uh, weekend of miracles. I've been fasting, praying. There will be miracles in Lagos. The meeting will start on Friday. I was to leave on Thursday, rest, and the meeting will start Friday weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, weekend of miracles. On Wednesday afternoon, Dr. Somra picked his phone. Turned it, yes, yes, Papa. You'll be with me in Moscow on Friday. God bless you. Bye. <laughs> Drop the phone. Did not ask about how is your welfare? How are you doing? How are you going to fly there? What are you going to do? I said, what kind of thing is this? <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't believe in revenge, but I can, I can pay back what I just received transferred to. So I called Olus, Pastor Olus. You preach the weekend of miracles. Goodbye. <laughs> I went with Dr. Somra to, to <laughs> Moscow. I'd never been treated that way at a border point in my life. The guy clocked his gun. He said, Coupon, Coupon, Coupon. I said, Coupon. <laughs> I'd never played pool in my life. Coupon. He said, Coupon, Coupon. I said, Coupon. So I opened my briefcase in case there was a contraband they were looking for. Then he took the ticket. He said, coupon, coupon. I said, this one is coupon. It's ticket, ticket. <laughs> they saw that I had a return ticket. They let me go. It was so wonderful to meet Dr. Somra in his element and everything. I was the only black person, if you call yourself black, because I'm blessed. <laughs> I was the only black person to speak your language in the whole of the conference. Dr. Somra acknowledged everybody present but me. I said, no, maybe he didn't see well. <laughs> the second day, I helped him to take his Bible so that he would see me <laughs> face to face. He sat down, got up, 
thanked everyone, mentioned them by name, called their children, excluded me. I said, okay, could this man be ashamed of my color? So the final day of the conference, I helped him to take the Bible to the pulpit, to the podium, so that he could see me eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> Dr. Samra still greeted everybody and ignored me. I was so sorrowful. I said, you see, this is what you get. When you don't go to where you are celebrated, you go to where you are tolerated. In my heart. This man would never see me again. How could he treat me this way? I felt so bad. Then at 3 a.m., my phone rang. It was Lester Jr. And he said, uh, Pastor Barker, I said, yes. Uh, Papa wants to see you. I said, he should be sleeping by now. It's 3 a.m. He said, no, he just finished his meeting, and he, he asked you to come. So what is he calling me for? You have disgraced me publicly. <laughs> you now want to appreciate me privately. So all the white people have gone. <laughs> I stepped into his room and he said, you are offended because I did not acknowledge you. I said, who? <laughs> he said, I deliberately <clears throat> avoided acknowledging you because you are going to get what others did not get. And I said, I would rather prefer the one <laughs> outside. And he spoke to me. When your time comes, you will not have to struggle to be recognized. Reminded me of David. He said, we will not sit down until he comes. Even the elders will be rising to say, where is he? He said, that's when your time has come. You must know. And he said, congratulations. Indiana Christian University is giving you a doctor of ministry degree. And put the letter in my hand. He said, nobody got that. That's why I kept quiet watching you. Don't be offended next time. Kai, I wept that day. You understand? So thank you, Nims, for paying the price. I know it was not convenient. I told the uh, elder yesterday, I said, I blackmail you to come. <laughs> the last story I told you was how you put my wife on the plane for her 10th wedding anniversary and from, to join me in Chicago. You had to look for flight. I said, whatever happens, if you are going to borrow money, if you are going to, don't steal, but <laughs> be there. He said, it's not convenient. I said, okay, names, I'm warning you. <laughs> but you can see Every other person took excuse and I permitted them. There must be a reason why I said, you must come. I don't force people. But a time comes when you raise the standard in relationships that you have. And when the time comes and they find you here and then I said, uh, why, did they, why is he doing this? It's because of the price paid. Thank you, every one of you. I, I did not spend a dime towards this meeting. I didn't buy your tickets. I didn't know how it was put together. It was just something that began four years ago. Talking about the train, I'd only seen that train twice in my life. The first was in Broken Harrow, Oklahoma. The second time, the Lord will open my eyes to see it again was at the primary convention of APC. As soon as I finished speaking, I saw the train again, and it left. <laughs> Lord, I've seen this train before, but this time I do not see the name lettering or anything on it. What is I know I recognize it. And he didn't respond. Until I got home, ate and slept. I said, the train left the station, but it's coming to fetch you. When, I don't know. Where, I don't know. The moment God showed us the vision uh, or the strategy of our own ministry, we began the lettering global. I called, as you heard today, Emmanuel Alao into my office. as a Emmanuel, I do not understand IT, but can you create a rich and robust website 
that all our people who are scattered all over the world can connect us wherever they may be. My knowledge of IT is still poor. And they started. And we began to invest money on this and that. And, and then generations after that, we deployed all kinds of resources. We did not know God was preparing us for COVID. For three days, I was in, in uh, North Carolina asking only one question from saints who seemed to be perplexed. After COVID-19 pandemic, what next? Because it appears we, we, are not, we don't even know. Will such a thing happen to the entire planet and God has nothing, does not know anything about it, and then we'll still remain the same way? No, but who is present in to find out? We can't say we miss service. It's just that I was overworked. Because we were meeting almost every week online. People were connecting everywhere, at home, abroad. And God gave us a robust e-church thereafter. Dominion Partners also became Dominion Partner Global. And then four years ago in Calgary, you watched the video. I said to you then, I said, the day is coming when sons and daughters will gather together once a year or twice a year maximum. Now it's once in two years. Uh, it's not biannual, it's biennial. Uh -huh. <laughs> Unless you hold me and said, uh, well, we need a second time. This is, I, know, I wear too many caps, and at this juncture, I want you to please appreciate Mrs. B for being there with me. I always say that because of our sacrifices and the sacrifices of my children. They more or less are given me to the world. It's whatever is left. I'm a devoted husband, caring father, but sometimes I can't be everywhere. Rather than letting me go, she followed me everywhere. She would say, when you get there now, I said, don't worry, just be there. You'll be protecting my head. There are some women in Abuja. <laughs> if they enter your room and you are there alone, their perfume can confuse you. <laughs> Just follow me. Let us go. <laughs> and she's been there solidly. And Pastor Bank, I'm about to expose your secret. I didn't know that when Pastor Banks saw myself, Mrs. B, and Shegwe alone on the field, he started crying. Somebody leaked your secret to me. He started crying, said, where are people following him? They didn't allow them to enter through the gate we entered. They had to go through another gate. And that was what they tear gas them, they did everything. But they will reap. Remember names. They tear gas them, some of them vomited. Uh, oh yes, it was bad. But we went to Lion's Den and we came back alive, intact, with our integrity intact. And guess what? It's not over. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will be ready for you and I to face God on May 29th. Until then, stay calm. It's not over till it's over. Thank you, Mrs. B. I, I thank you so much for it. Here we are again in Calgary. Um, thank you, Pastor Bank, for, for loving us dearly, even behind the scene when we don't know. Your tears will not be in vain. Amen. You will turn your tears into laughter. Amen. You will turn your mourning into dancing. Amen. And in Jesus' name, we will rejoice together. Many years ago, Pastor Bank started this initiative. I was one of those who ministered there, we called Gathering of Sons. Um, and I'm going to locate that. He also learned that, I think so, from Dr. McCambi, who was also doing Gathering of Sons, but he began to gather his own sons. And I felt we have, we have improved beyond the days of Jacob. 
we have daughters and we recognize them. So we'll call it gathering of sons, daughters, and their spouses. And I'm glad that some of you are here with your spouses, and some of you are here uh, all by yourself. God will richly bless you. Let me tell you the emotion that I felt and the overwhelming thing before we go into the theme of our convergence. I look at Genesis chapter 49, where Jacob asked his sons to gather together so that he would tell them what will befall them in the last days. If you were there reading Genesis 49, you would think that rather than blessing uh, Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, he actually cursed them. But it simply means you have not read your Bible well. Let's go there. Genesis 49. Let me read verses 1 and 2, or a few verses there. Uh, the gathering of sons, daughters, and their spouses. In Genesis 49, it reads, and I quote, verse 1, And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall before you in the last days. Gather together and hear you sons of Jacob and listen to Israel your father. Reuben. You can imagine Reuben marching forward. Say, yes, I'm still your firstborn. Yes, I'm going to get a double portion. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, Emma Sami. <laughs> if a drummer was there, I would be shaking his head. The excellence of dignity, excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it, he went up to my couch. What do you think Reuben would do that day? What do you think will happen? Depression? Suicide? Or what? Question, is this a blessing or a curse? Next person online, Simeon and Levi are brothers' instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united for their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man. And in their self-will they am strong and ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce. And their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. What is happening today? These are your biological sons. God was going to make a nation out of these 12 sons who will become 12 tribes. And Reuben, bah! Simeon, bah! Levi, bah! Until he got to Judah, the fourth one. You recall that Judah, of all these four, was the only one who owned up to his blunders and sins. He's left with Tamar. Got a set of twins through his daughter-in-law. And when they said she was pregnant, he said, burn her alive. And he had already surrendered the signet, the ring, the staff. Every symbol of that family had given for just one night stand. He said, the man who owned this is responsible. He said, she's better than I am. Because her sins were exposed, his father said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until she comes. And his brothers will praise him. So what happened to the first three? The first one slept with his father's wife and did not even acknowledge. Thought the father did not know until last minute. 
I pray for you that your father will not stir up your trouble in this. And then last minute before he breathed his life, he said, this happens to you. But he said those things not to curse them. He said those things so that they can be aware of how to make repairs. Moses will eventually bless Reuben. Moses will eventually bless Levi. They'll become a priest unto God. The only one missing in Deuteronomy 33 was Simeon. You'll find 11 tribes mentioned there, not 12. Because it's a four, what do you call it now, Pastor Bang? Somewhere. In Genesis 49 that we just read, you will see that this man did not curse any of his children. In verse 28, all these are the 12 tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them, and he blessed them, he blessed each one according to his own blessing. By talking that way to them, they were able to make adjustments, correction. And when we meet like this, there will be words that will correct you. There will be words that will convict you. There will be things that will challenge you. Please, nobody has reported you to me. If Holy Spirit is reading your mail, it's between you and him. I trust God that you will not miss the mark. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of these 12 sons... I want to focus attention on two. I want to focus attention on Zebulon and Issachar. And this is why this convergence is critical. In Genesis 49, verse 13, it reads, Zebulon shall dwell by the heaven of the sea. It shall become a heaven for ships, and his brother shall adjourn Sit down. Read your Bible well. That's the headquarters of the marketplace in the Bible. Verse 14. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between two bodies. He saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant. He bowed his shoulder to bear a burden and became a band of slaves. This particular scripture on Ishaka, I use it to challenge my son, Olushego. I said, learn to put your shoulder to labor right now so that you can have real choice, real estate, and enter into rest because you labor when you are young. Opportunities were being dangled at him to become CEO and to become this with the president, with the governor. No, 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 don't start your life that way. Start small and grow big. Do not be an opportunist. It's not every door that opens that you walk through. Yes. Uh, I had to give him this scripture after he saw me reject. Uh, what's the name of the car now? A Rolls Royce. He said, Dad, must you make enemies for yourself? They sent this to you as, I mean, it's a gift. And to, as I shall go, you don't understand now, you'll understand later. The day Dazuki Gate opened, and they were putting the names of those they bought vehicles for in the paper, and my son did not see my name, he came to thank He said, thank you for not receiving it. Uh, it's not everything you grab. We are not led by opportunities. We are led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you understand me? Paul said, the great door was open before me, but I had no rest in my spirit. Therefore, I departed. The peace of God is the umpire of God's will. I pray will guide you. Amen. Look at these two wonderful sons. Zebulon will live by the sea. He will be outbound. But Issachar will be a tent dweller. The two unique sons will happen in your family and my family and will happen in the big church. The reason you are here, uh, I remember uh, Dupsi uh, doing well in Nigeria, and I said, Dupsi, I perceive that this your 
dresses that you are making is going to become international soon. It was first uh, the education of our children. Your, your children are finished. Why are you still here? <laughs> God has a way of relocating. Those he will send forth, he will send them out. Those that will stay behind, they will stay behind. If God does not balance it that way, there will be so many things we will miss. Let's go into Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. Here is Zebulun and Issachar again, verses 18 and 19. And of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, where? In your going out. Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out. And Nishaka, where? In your tents. Now, the ones that are meant for tents, when they leave, there will be trouble. The ones that are meant for going out, when they don't go, there will be lack. It takes two wings for a bird to fly. If you are going to be an impactful uh, a church that will reach out to nations, there must be those who are outbound, Going out, and there must be those who are dwelling in the tents to keep the tents strong. Listen to what the, both of them will do. And of Zebulon, he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in your going out, and Isaac in your tents. They shall call the peoples to where? It is a combination of both to call the people to the mountains. And when we get to the mountains of culture today, you will discover that you have a role to play. And those at home also have a role to play. If we are going to be effective in reaching the nations of the earth, in ensuring that we preach the authentic gospel of Christ, in ensuring that we carry out his assignment, there must be those who are outbound, making impact in the nations of the earth, and there are those who stay in the tent. It is a combination of both that will bring maximum impact and massive wealth to any given ministry or church. And of Zebulon is there, rejoice, o Zebulon, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call the peoples to the mountains. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall partake of what? Of the abundance of the seas and of treasures hidden in the sand. Let's take that. Let's raise the stake. Come with me to Isaiah 59. You see the combination of both. In action. Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 20. The Redeemer will come to Zion, and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit is upon you. My words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, now from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. Now, you would not jump into chapter 60 as if chapter was part of the whole thing. It's a continuum. It's a, it's a flow. It's a when the, uh, you encounter God and you repent of your sins, whether you are going out or staying in, the Spirit of God is upon you. His word is in your mouth. It's in the mouth of your descendants. It's in the mouth of your descendants, descendants. Once the Spirit and the Word are effective in the life of a people, whether going out or staying in the tent, then you can arise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. I share with you yesterday, I said the word is evil. You know the word is evil? Darkness is everywhere. The word is evil, but the word is not our enemy. It's our assignment. The darker it is, the better for us. We'll shine brighter and brighter until we dissipate their darkness. We're not afraid of them. We are not going to run away from the battlefield. No, we are going to stand strong and make a difference. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles, you can call them ungodly nations, shall come to your light. 
and clings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see what happened. The same way he called his sons and said, gather to me, my son. Lift up your eyes and see. They gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from Australia. Amen. They'll come from South Africa. Amen. They'll come from Europe. Amen. They'll come from the United Kingdom. Amen. They'll come from Africa. Amen. Your sons, they've gone out, but they're coming back. Amen. They're not coming back empty. They're coming back with substance. And I'm not talking about coming back to live in the country anymore. The world is a global village. It's a global hamlet now. Wherever they are, they'll make such impact that they'll be a blessing to their home country too. In 10 days, they'll be trouble. Uh, when my family was here, when they were in the UK six years, here six years, Mrs. B knows once I get home after 10 days, I should return in peace. Because I'll start seeing cobweb. I'll start seeing the things that she not say, oh, ito, sheto, come and go. I'll be smelling iru. <laughs> it's time to go home because my destiny is intertwined with that of Nigeria. I can't lose steam. I can't lose energy. I can't lose my passion. It's too late until I see Nigeria flourish. Yeah. And once you accept that responsibility, then it's easy. Nobody is going to begin to calm you down so that you not be depressed. People are calling Mrs. B. Mrs. B. Oh, it's Pastor. Oh, oh, oh. He said, don't kill yourself when you're sleeping. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. The country, your son shall come from afar. Your daughter shall be nursed at your table. Then you shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The drumderies of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebel shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Blessed are those who are sent out and who are outbound. And blessed are those who dwell in their tents. Together we gather today to make a difference. And the pronouncement and the proclamations that will go forth will be your portion. In the name of Jesus, you have reason to show for your coming here. You have some sense to show for your relocating. You will not perish in a foreign land. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen. Pastor Tokbawapuala, you're welcome. God bless you. And uh, who is this man like? Uh, the man I told is Jendor. How did Jendor make it here? God bless you. Uh, I have a confession to make to Tokyo Popola. He didn't know I was in Houston. When I called you and said, send me your address, it was because I thought I could make it. I stepped out at 12 noon. I returned to the hotel at 12 midnight uh, because of people that I had to see there. I said, okay, I'll see you. And I said, no problem. I was uh, I wasn't. <laughs> Uh, do you call neck of wood or wood of neck, whatever it is? I was there. I called Gladys also. He thought I was calling from. Uh, I came. I came on Monday to Houston, and I left on Wednesday morning, first flight. I spent only 24 hours in the place. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Now, shall we go to the reason why we gather together? You have seen why I was overwhelmed. I'm so happy that I could see you again in your own power slot. I know I will see you at the top, I told you before. Your coming here is not an accident. It was by design. I saw my children teacher back home in Nigeria, and I said, how are you? Are your kids, are they finished? University, and I said, ah, pastor, finish university. They are married. One is a lawyer. I said, you are becoming a grandmother soon. How old are you? I started asking <laughs> questions. Uh -huh. uh, and everywhere I see you turn here and turn there, you've just been such a blessing. Thank you for being you, and thank you for not throwing away your faith and compromising uh, your faith in a strange land. The theme... 
of our convergence is global mission and globalization avenues for exercising the dominion mandate. Say that with me. Global mission, sorry, great commission, and globalization, they are the same thing. Uh, uh, avenues for exercising the dominion mandate. Early morning today, I sent some of you videos. It was a video of a message I preached 18 years ago at Kensington Temple. I sent it to Nims also. Uh, and from that moment, I was speaking about globalization, the import of it, the impact of it, that was going to happen. And someone who saw it on YouTube sent it to me this morning. As I listened to it, it's like, wait a minute. You mean I said this 18 years ago? I didn't even realize it. Pastor I.S. James, good to have you here. Uh, when I was preparing my note, I remember our visit to Nairobi, Kenya, uh, Maurice Cerullo. And I'm going to tell his story before I get into the depths of the, of the message today. Say with me again, the Great Commission, Commission. Globalization, Globalization, Avenues, Avenues. For, exercising for Exercising the Dominion Mandate. Before we go into any uh, definitive statements about either globalization or global mission or great commission, I'd like to recall today with nostalgic feelings the story that Dr. Maurice Cerullo told us in one of those conferences that we partook of across the nations of the earth. Let me admit openly that Dr. Maurice Cerullo was one of my strategic destiny helpers. I never met him before. I didn't invite him to our church. It just happened that they were going to have a conference in 1992, February, and they were not going to go far away from the city and our location at that time was best for their conference. Dr. Cerullo came and with all his entourage, uh, never met him, never read his book. And as a host pastor, they asked me to lead five minutes prayer. I got on the platform to pray and I said, there are three types of people you find in any given parcel of land. The owner, the occupier, and the trespasser. But God is the owner of the universe and the earth. The earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. The occupier is Adam. God gave everything to him after he had created everything. But eventually the trespasser showed up. So there's only one punishment for the trespasser. The trespasser must be prosecuted. And I led prayer that if there's any trespasser in your life, in your land, begin to execute that judgment that is written. Dr. Cerullo was entering from the back door I was watching television, listening to that prayer, and he asked, are you a Orisha Jeffon, Bishop Michael Konko, who is this person? They said, he's the host pastor. What's his name? They told him. And he got on the platform and said, turn the bakery, you'll be preaching on my 25th anniversary in San Diego this year. I like the revelation you just shared. And that's how I preached. And uh, I didn't know I was on satellite. That took us to 21 states of the US. One message. What was the title? Do you remember? There is no recession in God's kingdom. In one of those conferences, Dr. Somra, sorry, I beg your pardon, Dr. Maurice Cerullo shared a story. 
a story that will illustrate the success of globalization and the failure of global mission. How fast the global mission was, I mean, still becoming the great omission. It was in a remote village in Brazil, and he was very thirsty. And he saw a man in front of his hut with crates of Coca-Cola. And he went to him and he said, may I buy a bottle of Coke? He said, yes, by all means. And gave him, do you want hot one or cold one? <laughs> the man had some ice blocks and he gave him a cold one. And Dr. Maurice Cerullo, in his usual way of wanting to reach every soul, and asked the man, do you know about Jesus Christ? And the man said it to him, is he another brand of soda? <laughs> Globalization got Coca-Cola into that remote village, but the church has not gotten Christ to that man. And we're still dealing with that today. For clarity's sake, let's have some definition. In order to make the theme of this convergence both interesting and challenging, let's start with globalization. Would anyone like to contribute? Hey, Bishop, good to see you. My word. God bless you. You are going to pay your dues today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello, who is going to help me? What is globalization? Okay. Let me start for my children teacher. She spoke so brilliantly this morning. Shall I pass the mic? No. Okay, Dr. Samuel Fadeyi, you have been about this. You have gone from Lagos to Ocean State, Ocean State to Ireland, Ireland to, to New Zealand, and New Zealand to Canada. You've become a global citizen. So what is globalization? Thank you. I, yeah, I think globalization will be um, the ability of the world to economically to integrate um, world economy uh, and spread across the globe. Thank you. All right. That's globalization from Ocean State. Let us get globalization from where they all, all they do in their lives is to read. Uh, Akintala was uh, campaigning, and he said, Azikiwe is a way, Mbadiwe is a way, but Mbadiwe is a way. Pastor Togwe Wugola is an ekiti person. A thorough breeding kitty. What is globalization? Thank you. I'll take one definition from a woman. She has gone to Google. Uh -huh. Yes, it will be. <laughs> you see her? This is what the world has become. She quickly opened to Google. I can open Google also. Go ahead. Thank you. According to Google, uh, sit down, Motibo. <laughs> yes? Well, Google simply simplified what I wanted to say. I would have had to. All right. Just... <laughs> There's no point. Uh, globalization is a process of interaction and integration among people, companies, and governments worldwide. Interaction, integration among people, companies, and governments worldwide. Simply put, 
Globalization is the word used to describe the growing interdependence of the world's economies, cultures, and populations brought about by cross-border trade in goods and services, technology, and flows of investment, people, and information. If you ask me for a layman's definition of globalization, I'll simply say it is a process by which ideas, knowledge, information, goods, and services spread around the world. In that message that I preached 18 years ago in Kensington Temple, which I forwarded to some of you today, I did specify that the moment believers begin to hear globalization, what strikes their medulla oblongata? Is there anything called that? Is one word government, antichrist, 666, the beast is about to emerge. Reminds me of how we were told, I won't tell the church, that don't ever touch computer. And they too are using it now. Sometimes we think that God is not in charge of this planet. That Satan will have his way and God will just keep quiet. The more I study the Bible, the more I realize that globalization is not a new phenomenon. Let's look at some examples, please. Genesis 41. Verses 56 and 57. Genesis 41, 56 and 57. The farming was over where? I can't hear you. The farming was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. So all countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. What do you think is happening here? Globalization. Who was the man in charge here? Satan? Agent of the devil? Do you realize why God sent him to Egypt? Are you realizing why he had sent you here? He came to Egypt as a slave. But the Spirit of God was in him. From two dreams. <laughs> it's amazing that wherever God is going to use you and how he's going to use you, he starts preparing you from home. Yeah. Would have given you some values that just, you just don't trade off. He had two dreams in his father's house. There were two dreams he interpreted in prison. And there were two dreams waiting for him from Pharaoh. And if you connect all of them together, it's God saying, I'm taking you to be a world-class citizen. Yeah. All the countries of the world came to Joseph. What do you think God himself, how he will feel? That in every generation I have a man. Can you be the man for your own generation? Where you find yourself now? Can God lay his mighty hands upon you and use you in such a way that you excel and you stand out from the park? Let's 
Let's take some other examples. Genesis 41. We have read 56 to 57. Let's now go to Genesis 42, 1 to 3. The famine did not abate. The sons of Jacob had gone to Egypt to buy grain. They had finished their grain. And their father said, now you need to go back and get some more. Genesis 42, 1 to 3. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? Did God allow this to happen? Why didn't they have grain in their own land? Why? Because it was time for them to reconcile with their brother. He showed Joseph two powerful dreams. So I saw the sheaves bowing down to my sheaves. I saw the moon and the, and the sun and 11 stars bowing down to me. And he said, are you going to rule over us? And he said, let's kill him and see what will become of his dream. That God's dreams don't die. <laughs> you can only propel people who are dreamers into their future when you gang up against them. Do you know by the time they got there and they prostrated, Joseph knew them and they didn't know him. And the Bible says, and Joseph remember the dream. I'm looking forward to the day Nigeria will flourish again. Oh, that day I will tell you I said so to you for years. Here we are. Come and contribute your quota. In the name of the Lord of hosts. Well, you know what happened, don't you? They didn't know Joseph. Joseph recognized them. And Joseph said, you are all spies. Who are you? He said, we are not spies. Who? We are not spies at all. We are, we are sons of the same father. We are 12 in number. One is dead. And the youngest one is with the father at home. We are not spies. He said, all right. Now I would know whether you are spies or not. You need to bring your brother here. So I'm going to bind one of you. Which one was bound? It was Judah. Was it Simeon? It was Simeon. Then Judah was bound a second time. Pardon me? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Simeon was bound. Uh, oh, you're combined there. <laughs> There's something that happened to Judah. Judah was the one saying to the father, Aha. Uh, he had to because he was the one. You know why we betray ourselves in the body? Judah was the one who moved the motion for his sale. He said, Why do we have to kill him? Let's sell him and make money. And so they got 20 shekels and shared two, two, two each. They were happy and richly blessed. My hands are blessed. <laughs> Blood money. <laughs> Where I'm going to is your second journey. To let you see that every nation has its own inheritance. In the second journey as we were returning, Jacob said, take the goods of the land for the man also. Let's see it. Don't write off any nation. There's no nation without inheritance. Amen. Genesis 43. This was where Ju Judah was pleading with the father that without taking Benjamin, they can go. Verse 8. And Judah said to Israel, his father, send the lad with me. And we'll arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him, so because you sold him. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me be at the blame forever. For if we had not lingered, surely by now would have returned this second time. And their father Israel said to them, If I must, it must be so. Then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels 
and carry down a present for the man, a little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachio. I ate those nuts a few days ago like, wow. You remember, Mrs. B? They gave me one. I went back and said, can I have two more? That's so delicious. Pistachio and nuts and almonds. And they had something to offer too. Please don't look down on yourself and don't talk down on your nation. By the time Nigeria bounces back, my God, the G20 will have to expand to G22. Amen. They will have no choice. Do you understand me? All these G20 nations uh, that are frontline nations that dominate the GDP of the world, 60-something percent of, of world population, they will have to welcome this African nation Amen. that has put its acts together. Amen. Even Spain now is just observer status. Uh, do you understand me? That we can make them 21, we'll be 22. We'll sit on the table of brotherhood in this world. Amen. You cannot ignore Nigeria. Amen. Regardless of what is coming forth from there, when it turns around, you welcome us again. Amen. When I left Nigerian shore in 1980, I did not receive any visa to get to Britain. I got to the border and they stamped my passport six months, 1980. I went to Harrods, and you will see billboards there, Ekabo, Kedu, and Naira was spent on the streets of London, 20 Naira. You didn't need to take a dollar anywhere then. And today, dollar is one dollar to 1,000, or what is it now? <laughs> the first time I took BTA, the first time I took BTA, and the last time I took BTA was when my wife was still working in the bank in 1985. I went there to take BTA. One Naira was one dollar eight cents. After that, I don't do BTA anymore. Wherever it sends me, the resources will be there to meet me. Do you understand me? I don't even think about it. Because the land must respond to me. You must cultivate that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your land of sojourn must respond positively to you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They had to offer. They had something to offer Egypt. Can you imagine when pistachio, like I had to look for extra in the plane a few days ago. When, when Joseph would see pistachio again. <laughs> Who sent this? <laughs> I want you to look beneath the power of any buoyant, powerful, big nations of the earth. You will also see citizens of other nations contributing their meaningful quota to their successes. Every time we read about Nigerians in the U.S., they are the most educated uh, ethnic nationality driving in this country. It's there. I didn't smuggle it in. It's there. It's kind of, if you see how powerful they are, and now they are opening their borders in Canada, you call it brain drain. I don't call it brain drain. They're going to learn something, they'll be back. Amen. They'll be back. Amen. But some will die. Yes, some died in the wilderness too. Some would die there and be buried there, but they would have done something that would let their children be better off. Amen. Can I hear amen? amen? And let's go look at the nations of the earth. Whether it is globalization by force and by fire, by captivity and by slavery. Daniel got to Babylon, so did Shadrach, so did Meshach and Abednego, and they dominated the history of Babylon for 60 years nonstop. They were captives. But the purpose in their heart that they would not defile themselves, and they made a difference. They were ten times wiser than all the magicians of the Chaldeans. What do you say to Daniel? How do you order him around when Nebuchadnezzar will fall prostrate before him? How about when Nebuchadnezzar thought it's time to dedicate the God of gold, to elevate gold to the place of worship. 
There were three individuals who made a difference that day. Nobody waited to dedicate that goal that day. Because Nebuchadnezzar himself said, there's no other God apart from the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's about time for them to know your God. He sent you here to be a witness. They will ask you, why do you do your things differently? They say, it's because of Jesus. Do you understand me? You become his billboard. You become his advertising agent. But then they're looking for him when they're builders. Yes. Uh, you, you are vice president of a political party there. Uh, what, what's our role, Chair? Female vice chair. Female vice chair of which party? The Labour Party. The Labour Party. That's the ruling party? Yes. Well, they just changed the left. Uh, they just changed the party. Okay. When I was there. Yes, you were the Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then when they said I was coming, you see how they opened their parliament. <laughs> you needed to see. <laughs> Look, I have swagger too. Uh -huh. I have swagger. When your sons and daughters are doing exploits, when you get there, they're meeting their father. They gave me cufflinks that I still wear till tomorrow. They honored me. They sat with me. They needed to ask questions. Why do you have many wives in Nigeria, in Africa? You remember? Yes. <clears throat> I clear my throat. I said, because we are not hypocrites. You, your husband, do it behind the scenes. And then scandals break out, your marriages break. Where we do our own in the open. <laughs> Can't talk down on my nation. No. I will not accept. It was such a joy. Uh, it was such a joy to know that Pastor Shei wrote the Christian syllabus for Christian education in Melbourne. And it's being used in schools. And you are saying, what impact are we having? We can begin to give you the roll out. We keep quiet because showing off is fool's glory. First Chronicles 14, 1 to 2. With all the sufferings of David... He chose not to live in the palace of Saul. He chose not to take a single parcel of land that belonged to Saul. He returned everything to Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. And when it was time for him to build his house, see who came to build it. Have you seen 1 Chronicles 14, 1 to 2? Yes, sir. What does he read? Now here I'm king of Tyre. Sent messengers to David. He sent messengers to David to build him a house of cedar. Do you understand me? It's globalization in action. They were experts in that field, and it was time, and, and, and uh, uh, they sent messengers from there to come and build houses for a uh, house for, of cedar for David. And David perceived God has exalted his kingdom on high. For the sake of his people, Israel. And when Solomon was going to build the temple, he also sent to the same king of Tyre. He said, nobody knows how to cut timbers like you. Send your men to come over here. That's globalization. It's not a new phenomenon. God will always have a say in what goes on in the world. Can I hear amen? amen. Ancient kings also engaged themselves in skill acquisitions. We were fooled to think of transfer of technology. Nobody transferred any technology to us. But ancient kings engaged themselves in skill acquisition from one another. You see Solomon sending to the king of that, look, you are good people when it comes to shipping and everything. I'm going to send my men to you so that they learn from you and they can bring wealth to us and you will benefit from it also. It's not a new thing. Don't always... Turn your mind to, to where globalization means antichrist. It means 666. Globalization also means uh, one world government. I don't care who, if you have half world government. All I know is in the midst of it all, it will become a platform for Jesus to be seen and to be heard. Let them put it all together. We use their platform to advertise Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you understand me? 
This is the angle I'm coming from. Whether it's globalization, is an avenue for us if we stand tall, we stand higher above the perversity of generation, and we are making a mark in our field of endeavor. The world will welcome us. Look at the Nigerian girl that won the gold uh, trophy. Okay. Look, did it matter whether she was female or male? Do you know she was not head of state? Do you know when she was about to receive that trophy, the national anthem? I was crying. And after I cried a while, I started dancing. Once she bolato, ola uta ola kuse yi. Once she bolato, ola uta ola. Once she even if it's by sports, by all means, Nigeria will still excel. Yeah. We'll make our mark. You're sent here to get yourself to shine for Christ. Yes. Beyond earning your dollar or earning your sterling, much more. The impact you have in the next. See, I, I, I recall uh, so many years ago, now I think it was 87 or no. It was in 97, 98. My father's house became a museum. And the governor of Ogun State was coming to dedicate it. Others were coming and everyone was coming. And I left names at the door. I said, don't let anybody enter this house until we come. And so the governor dispatched the security agents that they must go and check the house because of bomb and this and that. And, and they met names at the door. He said, yeah, we are governor's security. We need to go in. He said, you can't enter until Pastor Bakari gets here. He said, how can you say that? We are security. And he dipped his hand into his pocket and he brought MI5, or what is it? He was sitting on the board of MI5. He said, he said huh? The Ramba. <laughs> they went to tell the governor, said, Pastor Bakari brought MI5. Please, oh, don't think I'm a small man. Oh. <laughs> I have sons who are grown. I'm not kidding. No. I'm not joking with you. I look tiny. Oh. Don't joke with me. I met members of, of uh, uh, what do you call those people in the higher place. House of Lords. Who call me father in the faith today? Who are my daughters? Because of him. Late Papa, uh, Ishaaraman, he wrote a book, and he said, I would like the Prime Minister of Britain to get this. Uh, can you get me his address so that I can, I can, I said, don't worry. I will get it to him. I will call a member of the House of Lords, and I will call, they will come here to collect it, and they will give it to the minister, and the, the, the Prime Minister, and he said, any of all. You know people here. I'm well connected though. Be careful. Don't, don't joke with me. Uh, don't joke with me. Because our sons and daughters are strategically planted in places. I can go on and on. But I want to be able to share your testimony with the word so that I'll be able to say I did not labor in vain. Amen. And that we are not careless. That we, we, we followed God and we are getting results. Can I hear a good amen? amen? I remember when my daughter called me one day. He said, look at me. He said, daddy, I said, hey. he said is, have we not made mistakes now? Is this not a serious mistake? I said, which mistake? He said, I've relocated here. My husband is in Nigeria. He only comes once in a while. The bank that is trying to turn around is dead. How red was the bank? Six billion. Sixteen billion red. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. It's almost close to... to 
almost close to Antichrist. 66, 66 billion dead. He was executive uh, director of Sky Bank. One of the most prominent banks, ready to be the next, or at least second in command. And then he felt persuaded, let's go there and turn it around. A completely dead bank. My daughter said, are you sure? Sky Bank helped Wema Bank and gave some money towards it. Because one of us was the chairman of, when, of Sky Bank then, when he became the chairman, he said, sir, we are going to support the Citadel with two billion naira. I said, that's fine. He didn't give us two kobo. <laughs> it is Wema Bank that was dead, completely in comatose, that gave us four billion. Wow. If God did not plant him there at the time he planted him, where would we be? Lift up your hand as a known to God are uh, all his works from eternity. He has a way of planting people strategically. He knows what he's doing. And when he does it, he alone will receive all the glory and praise. And do you understand me? I, 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 can, I can begin to flash up and say, no, I'm letting you see that he has just started with you. Amen. He has a reason for bringing you here. He has a purpose. Oh, uh, uh, if, if nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my sorrow. Joseph left home at the age of 17. He was 13 years of torture before he stood before Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. But from that moment on, remember the name of his two sons? God has made me to forget the toil and the labor of my father's house. And now I shall be fruitful in the land. You are going to forget. I love the song we sing in Africa. Okay. I'm in America. Let's see some benefits of globalization among us today. I'm not talking from globalization, economic globalization, uh, political globalization, cultural globalization. I can tell you all that and the challenges they have. I'll send my note to you, see all of it in there. Do you understand me? Because he's writing our own PhD thesis in industrial what? Industrial organization. Industrial organization. And psychology. And psychology, see. <laughs> <laughs> the Isaiah 55. Before we go, have you read in your Bible that nations will serve you? Yes. Uh, did God say so? Stand to your feet. I will ask you a few questions. This your wristwatch is from where? Okay, what nation manufactured it? You don't know. How about your hearing? Italy. Italy. Yeah. How about this one? Italy. How about this blouse? Uh, I don't know that. You don't know. <laughs> How about the shoe? <laughs> Every day you wake up, you take your soap, it's from Switzerland. You take your toothbrush, it's from Germany. You take your trouser, and you say nations are not serving you. Wow. The car you drive, do you manufacture it? Did he not say kings will be your nursing father and queens will be? Don't you know that those nations, they must be blessed in order to bless you? Yeah. I don't even know what kind of Concord and plane had flown in my life. I don't ask who the, who the pilot is. I just see it. For, for 35th wedding anniversary, they introduced, it had introduced what they call residence. Kai. Have you flown residence before? <laughs> Are you married? Yes, sir. How long have you been married? 22, okay. For your 25th anniversary, try residence. Amen. Amen. I know how to blow the head of Mrs. B. When she follows me everywhere, I compensate her. I say, Mrs. B, we are flying residence. I say, what is residence? Is it first class? I say, it's beyond first class. You enter the plane, and they take you into this 
six by six bedroom. Bed. You have spa. You have living room. And you have a butler waiting on you. Except you say, go and sleep. <laughs> She's there serving you. It's called suffering and smiling. <laughs> Some nation thought of that. Do you know, Pastor? I'm not sure you have seen Pastor Bang. Did I send it to you? The new cruise liner in the air. The aircraft where you can do cruise. It's being manufactured right now. You'll be there for seven days in the air. Playing basketball, swimming, right in there. And you say the world is, the world is cool. It's not. Look, we are here to ensure that the earth is, is turned back to the owner. I know you're going to have a break at 12 noon. I'm preparing you from where I'm preparing to take you. Isaiah 55. The benefits of globalization. God gave an invitation. He called it an invitation to abundant life. This is not about material mesmerism. I'm not talking about residence to excite your covetousness. You can't afford this day where you are. But don't die inside coach. God will promote you. There's a place where you can change, take your pajamas and sleep well. If you put God first, he will keep you first. It's not about bragging. It's just the grace of God. Sorry. This is the way I've chosen to live my own life. And I expect my sons and daughters to choose the same way. I remember late Dr. What's the name, Mama? What's the name of uh, the Guazo Fulani of, of Kano? Papa. Dende Fernandez. Dende Fernandez was ambassador of the United Nations. Our paths crossed. She had been, he had been watching Moment of Truth. I didn't know him. We never met. And then I team up with Buhari to be his running mate in 2011. And we did the vice presidential debate. And the man looked at the television. He recognized Nasir. He said, who is that the man doing Moment of Truth? He said, yeah. he wants to run election in Nigeria. I said, give me his account number. And Nasir called me and said, what account do we give to him? I said, no, let me clear with the boss. So I called the president. I said, then De Fernandez called me, this and that, and this and that. I said, yeah, give him your account. He's a good man. The next day, he sent 100 million naira into that account. And he said, if you need more, let me know. So I called the president that, oh, now president general said, he sent 100 million. He said, yeah, he's a good man. Please thank him. And he thanked him. And he turned to me and said, why are you telling him? You know how much I've given him? Can't you just keep your mouth shut? We have a Yoruba man we can trust now. I'm looking at him. Then he told me this story. He said, when he was young, his father would say, that is your, your okra plant. So he told the father, he said, Abba, is it only Ila that you grow? Can't you grow cocoa? Can't you grow other things? What's the point of this Eli that you always mention? He said, don't let anyone cut short what God plans to do in your life. If he's taking you to higher grounds, he will take you there. Don't settle for less than the best. This is God's invitation to abundant life. It's written to those who are thirsty, to those who are hungry, to those who are broke, to those who don't have money. Precious Jesus, 
seated in his presence. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about your picnic. Uh, I didn't travel across the seas and the oceans to come here and do picnic. I can do picnic in my garden. And those of you who still enjoy your picnic, you will not cancel it outrightly. You can do it from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. <laughs> when we finish here if the weather is favorable. Um, I just read the note you sent to me that is your wife's birthday when I opened my phone now. Thank God that you leaked the secret by itself, so I jumped at the opportunity. Happy birthday. Uh, where is Dr. Osalako? Okay. You sent me also a note regarding languages of the earth, that you like to see the earthlings. It's not our style. Whoever speak at the scripture, and once we say it, it becomes there. So let's do that. Then I introduce the next speaker, and then the next speaker, and then we take a break. If you are fasting, fast like me. I had two banana all day with a cup of water, and that will be it sufficient before dinner. Uh, the kingdom of God is not. Uh, <laughs> it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 11, verse number 1. The day the church stopped being still, still as I instill, and nobody asked questions, the day we start that, and we ask questions, and they ask the Lord questions, it will bring clarity to us. I'll be able to run with it. The church is not sit still as I instill. It's a place of cross fertilization of ideas and revelation. Genesis chapter number 11, if you see that without number 10, then you will conclude there was only one language on the earth. In Genesis 11, 1, now the whole earth had one language and one what? I can hear you. Had one speech. 
word speech literally there means leap. If you look in the middle column of your Bible, it will tell you they had one language and one leap. Can you see leap there? Is it in the middle column of your Bible? Can you read my leaps? Except you understand me. There are some things that I want to say to my wife. I don't have to open my mouth. She will know. Then she had lived with me for 38 years. That's not a joke. Some people just want to celebrate their 30th anniversary. <laughs> okay. Uh, leap. There are many seats between the lips and the cup. You heard, you will hear parents say, read my lips. They are referring to where it all began from. There was one language because before you open your lip to even utter a sentence, the other person understands you. Okay? So let's read verse 1 again. Ready? Read. Now they all had had one language and one lip. Well, there are languages on the face of the earth before chapter 11. Yes, there were. Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Now, this is the genealogy of the sons of Noah. The sons of Noah were three, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And sons were born to them after the flood. Then the one writing the genealogy, I'm showing us, as we read from the capital, nations descended from Noah. Until then, there were no nations. Nations descended from Noah. It started with the genealogy of Japheth. The sons of Japheth were Goma, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubai, etc., etc. And it comes to verse number 5. From these, the coastland peoples of the Gentiles were separated unto their land, Everyone according to his language, according to their families, into their nation. So if everyone is according to his language, it cannot be one language. But I'm not going to stop there. I will let you see languages also. Verse 20, talking of the next line. Now, these were the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages in their lands and in their nations. Were there languages on earth? Okay. Finally, verse 31. These were the sons of Shem, according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These were the families of the sons of Noah, according to their generations, in their nations. And from this, the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. Dr. Salako, is it clear? Your computer may not be able to get this so that you can do it. It's in the Bible. What happened then is where are you from originally? Delta State. What language do you speak? Ika. Okay. She's Ika. I'm a da. So back then, before Babel, she would speak Ika. I will understand. I will speak Egba. She will understand. We don't speak the same language, but we have the same lips. See, I don't want you to judge us when we pray too long, when we praise God too long. See where I took us from. I'm now sitting on the same table with the son of the man who I thought the world had come to an end. He is president and I'm president. That's why I'll continue to praise. Don't envy us. Don't judge us. We'll continue to praise him because he has done so much for us that we cannot praise him enough. Mm. Wonder, pray, bless God. All the, all, all the teachings on, 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 on invitation to abundance that we have is to give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure, present, and shaking together, running over, blah, blah, blah. I'm not against giving. I'm just telling you, without money, you can desire abundance and the life for your soul to have an abundance. You can sow your dream and reap your expectations. The moment God sees your heart is right, it will position people in your life. To take it. I can't give your testimony maybe when you have the time of the thing God has done for you, how you are able to get your building. Did I send money to you? 
When we were sending our missionaries, we gave them return ticket. And we gave them enough money to last for six months. After that, return home. I can't sustain you when you're having vacation. Go deep your roots in the ground and produce. If they didn't send you here, no, I'm going to go there. You must know where God is sending you. Pastor Bang, when I got to America, what did I tell you? I will spend this number of years, I will return home. Did I fail? I walked out. Time up. Gone. You must know why you are here. You must understand it. Circumstances could have brought you here. Anything could have brought you here. But bigger picture is there. You must locate it. You must ask the Holy Spirit to show it to you. And when that happens, my God, you become unstoppable. Can I hear amen? Amen. I don't want to talk about G20. There will be some other time if I have time. Because Nigeria is going to be one of them. Amen. By fire, by force. Amen. We'll sit on the table of brotherhood and determine how we'll run our affairs. Amen. And we'll do it with the spirit of God directing our affairs. Amen. Let's look at globalization from God's angle. I've showed you how international trade and how they were cross-fertilizing ideas, skills, and everything. Let's, let's see God in action. That every time you hear globalization, I will come to uh, global evangelism or uh, great commission. I think we should leave that for Pastor Bank. That's his terrain. Uh-huh. Let's look at three major examples. Anytime nations gather together, God shows up. Are you aware of that? At any time in the Bible that you see nations gather together, God shows up. He's a stakeholder. Don't listen to Parliament. Don't listen to Washington. Don't listen to the to, 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 to European Union. Even Britain got exit out of, out of there. Many of those people you think are on top of these things, they're just tools in God's hands. Tower of Babel. The nations of the head, how many languages they have? One before Tower of Babel. Are you sure? You have not read your Bible well. There were several languages reached after 10. They were divided into languages, into their nations. You find it three times mentioned. The problem at that point in time is if I speak German to you, you'll speak English. You'll understand German, I'll understand English. It was the understanding that God took off. Do you understand me? The nations gathered together. They were going to go contrary to God's plan. He wanted them to scatter and spread abroad. They were going to build that place. Let's just build a nation, a city that would touch the skies. And God said, Kai, this they have begun to imagine to do. I gave them this key. For exercising dominion. Imagination is a key. Once you imagine it, no one can restrain you from doing it. So they would do it. The only thing I can do at this moment for their rebellion is to confuse their language. And it took understanding out of it and scattered them. End of globalization, part one. Was God in action when all the countries of the world came to Egypt to buy corn? He has positioned his man there. He had no man to correct the people in Tower of Babel. He confounded them. But don't forget that he will correct that thing later. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. From all countries of the world. Sixteen nations gathered together. And God gave utterance to Galileans who spoke in their Galilean language. And the whole world understood the language of where they were born. He corrected Babel at Pentecost. And he's looking for apostolic churches who will be able to carry command and begin to, begin to disseminate his, his revelation across the planet where everyone will clearly understand regardless of their culture, regardless of their gender, regardless of the skin of their color. I love it when God showed up, when Nebuchadnezzar said, we are going to dedicate the golden statue in the plains of Daura 
I'm sorry, Dura. It's just <laughs> plains of Dura. <laughs> Do you know the greatest concern of believers in Nigeria today? Their heart cry, their prayer surrounds only three things. You want to know them? They are so concerned. And, and this is why they look at me as if I'm patronizing with Satan. I'm patronizing Satan, I beg your pardon. Uh, but Pastor, we don't know what, where you really stand. As I know where I stand, you'll soon find out. You know three major concerns you have in Nigeria? Fulanization, Islamization, Northernization. As a, 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 a Islamization will Islamize Nigeria. And you can't say no to the affairs. It happened in Turkey. Yeah. It happened in Tunisia. You can't say no to Fulanization. Domination is part of human nature. Mm. Northernization. I'm not Obelo started it. So what's wrong? Who tied your hands? Mm. Who said you cannot Christianize? Yeah. Who said you cannot Westernize? Westernization, Christianization. And if you are not satisfied with fulanization, start your Yorubanization. <laughs> Who is stopping you? But you are afraid because they have monopoly of violence. Oh, there's a rod in the hand of Moses. Amen. When God is ready, he will put pay to all the activities. Amen. I don't fear them at all. I won't let it affect me. Because every time nations gather together, God will show up. Yes, will he find you? Will he find me? Will you be there for him? Can God beat his chest and tell Satan, have you considered my servant Job? He was the richest of all the men of the East, and he was a righteous man. He eschewed evil. Can you be that person? I remember when my mother passed, we sent the but the brochure and everything for service and everything to the printer. And they gave us timeline. I said, that's fine. Don't take any tributes anymore. In the dead of the night, my phone rang. I said, oh, it's, ah. Alaji, how are you? He said, they said you have closed. You can't close. We have to print. My, my, my tribute must come in. I said, you don't know my mother. He said, I know you. I said, why do you want my, your tribute? He said, I know what I'm doing. Please, I'm coming, I'm attending, I'm attributing. You know who that was? Dan Gote. I'd never been to his house. I'd never been to his factory. I don't know his shop. But when it was time to build a citadel, I called him on phone. Elijah Dan Gote, I'm building a citadel. I'll need this number of tons of cement, and I want it supplied all at once so that we are not. He said, ah, I'd like to be part of it, sir. I'm giving you 30% discount. I said, that's too small. In the name of Jesus, the strength, the grace to negotiate from the position of strength will be your portion. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ. And when he showed up that day, you were there. They all showed up. I told the minister of the ML Connie meeting, Lord Liu, because they just brought, and they, if they were bringing check, it's okay, they were bringing cash, cash, cash. If I knew that that's how people die and they bless you. <laughs> About Lagos, Tinumbu, Dangote, Otedola, Minister of Petroleum, Minister of Finance, Vice President. Ah, Buari sent seven cows. Obasan just sent two. They sent 28 cows. I gave them to motherless babies' homes. Listen to me. You must come strong. You must get to the level that you say, Shall I mention your name to the king or the captain of the guard? But there's a price to pay. You will suffer, you'll be humiliated. You will go and stand in public place and it will be your wife and son that will follow you. <laughs> and then you will score zero. And you wear it as a badge of honor because you have not compromised your faith. And you will gain strength and authority and say, everyone keep quiet where you are. They can't kill people and you are now just parading yourself. You must be sensitive to the needs of people. And everywhere was dead silent. The president sat. You must gain strength. Your father owns the planet.
It's five minutes to 12. Huh? Okay. I would like to take a break. I'll come back to global mission. Pastor Bank, I submit this to your, uh, what do you say when you submit someone to vet it? If you are exercising dominion in the realm of globalization, because God has given the earth to the sons of men, I want you to know that the power behind global mission is greater than dominion. If you are going to make a difference in this world, you better understand. Dominion was given to Adam and by extension to sons and daughters of men over the earth. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. And the teaching in the church is about dominion, 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 dominion. It's a trick theme. The power behind global mission is more than dominion. It's a power of heaven and earth. Is it? All powers in heaven and the earth have been given to me. Go ye therefore. It's more than dominion. You understand me? Dominion relates to the earth. The power behind the global, the great commission and the global mission is a part of heaven and earth. And he said, just as my father sent me, so send I you. Wake up and smell the coffee. We are here to make a change and a difference. In a strategic way, not with pride, not with arrogance, because we know who we are. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have the backup of heaven. The powers of heaven and earth are behind us to ensure that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ and he will reign forever. Amen. We are here to make that difference. Was Christ apologetic before, before Pilate? He said, to this end was I bound and for this purpose came, is our pride? He's declaring his mission, his vision, his purpose. He understood it. Satan offered it to him free of charge. Took him to a high mountain and said, bow down before me and worship. He said, I'm, not, I'm getting it, not your way. And when the time came, he appeared to him, give me the key of hell, give me the key of death. I'm going to render your home doorless. You can't close it anymore because a people are about to come who would declare that the prison door is open. Amen. Please don't toy with the power of heaven and earth even if you don't, un if you don't understand ordinary dominion. I'll come back in the afternoon session and make a distinction and you know why we gather together at this time. It's a global phenomenon. We are becoming global citizens. He positioned us here to make a difference in all the nations of the earth. As truly as I live, all the earth will be covered with my glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. Can we just stretch forth our hands to him and begin to pray for him? Bless him in return. Ask God to fill him.